How you doing guys? This is Eric from rulethewasteland.com. Today's video is going to be about three more things that you should store or keep on hand for any sort of disaster situation, shit the fan, even just everyday preparedness. Now some of these things are going to be useful every day even if there's not a disaster, others might not be useful until there is a disaster, but it's still not a bad idea to keep on hand. The first item that I like, and I actually have to tip my uh, hat to my dad for this one because he uh, I saw that he did this and it actually seemed very useful, so I started doing it as well, is to keep around a spool of this twist tie material. This is actually a small one. You can get a, a much bigger roll if you need to. And I believe this one is being sold for in the garden section. I got it on Amazon. You can see the link in the description below. And uh, for tying up plants, and that's certainly one reason that you can keep this around is if you're going to be doing any uh, sort of the aquaponics or gardening or homesteading. Even if you're not doing it now or if you're planning on doing during a disaster situation, you want to have some of the supplies on hand. And one of those is this stuff to um, tie up plants and vines and things like that. And it's a lot better and more useful to have the big spool than it is to just have sheets of the little sticks lying around. Not only is it easier to get, easier to store, it's a lot more versatile than just a bunch of small pieces because you can use a lot longer piece if you need to as well. And there's almost endless amount of things you can do with this stuff from small level repairs to securing items, closing bags, just keeping a splint on a finger, anything like that. There's just a ton of different uses and the stuff is cheap enough that it's just almost a no-brainer to keep this stuff around. Securing cables, stuff on a pack, there's just an almost endless amount of stuff you could use for this. This one has a built-in wall hanger and a cutting implement, so you can just not even need scissors or anything like that. But uh, it's, you could use any knife or scissors to cut this as well, so that's not a big deal. But this stuff is extreme, extremely useful to sturdy twist tie or whatever it's called um, on a big spool. Definitely comes in handy. Another item that I would recommend, which is extremely useful in a wide variety of situations, is some sort of uh, epoxy resin like JB Weld or something like that. This is a steel enforced uh, steel reinforced epoxy resin has two chemicals that you can store separately for basically as long as you want and then when you need to you can mix it up and create a really really strong epoxy that you can use for all sorts of repairs and just building things and it's just super useful. I like it even more than something like super glue for a few reasons. One is that it's uh, probably stronger than super glue and it works on almost everything. Second one is that you don't have to worry about the thing getting all drying up and getting hard on you like a little tube of super glue and it's actually easier to work with in a lot of situations. It doesn't dry quite as fast, well not nearly as fast, super glue is almost instant. So that's the only real issue, would be have something that you have to hold together. But some one of the um, aspects of this that is also useful is that you can use it to actually fill voids in things as well. So if you're repairing a piece that some, of something where it had broken and there's actually a part missing, the void can actually be filled with the epoxy resin as opposed to super glue or gorilla glue just putting two pieces back together if they're there. If you're missing a part, you know, you can, I've actually seen a video where someone used a JB Weld to reshape the tooth on like a cog, like a gear of some kind for a low level machine of some sort, you know, obviously not in like a car or something like that, but some sort of plastic gear had broken and they actually replaced the part that was missing with the JB Weld and then shaped it so that it worked again. So it's really versatile. You can do a lot of stuff with it. Incredibly strong. Definitely worth keeping around because it's not that expensive. A few bucks for a little pack like that. And I, again, the link will be in the description. And it's just for everyday household stuff all the way through disaster scenarios, not a bad deal to keep that stuff around. Another item that I think is useful, and this is mostly just for disaster situations, you probably won't find too many uses for these in a normal day-to-day -day scenario, but they're not too expensive, is all sorts of industrial access keys. These two bags that I had laying around are actually for all sorts of paper towel, toilet paper dispensers and things like that. And uh, obviously that's not gonna be too many scenarios where you might need this, but in any sort of like salvage operation or you're foraging, you, sure you could bust all these things open, but it'd be a lot easier to be able to get in and access these in maybe a janitor's closet or whatever and get all the contents without having to destroy stuff, maybe use the container itself as well. The uh, YouTube channel Bibles and Barbells did a video not long ago about the industrial water called a Silcox key for spigots that are on the outside of commercial buildings and things like that that don't have a hand that you can just, a handle that you can turn by your hand. So if you wanted to access that, you need this special key. Things like that, there's all sorts of different um, access, industrial access keys that aren't necessarily 
um, specific. I mean, they're they're general. So this one key will work on all those different kinds of spigots. It's not for each lock. Doesn't have a different key. So look around, find out the type of stuff that you might need access to in a disaster scenario, and find out if there are any sort of general keys like that. Maybe a handcuff key, all sorts of stuff like that. Just general purpose keys that allow you to access different things that you may need to in any sort of disaster scenario. Not a bad idea to keep around, especially consider that most of these things are not that expensive. Other things to consider are water main tools. If you don't already have that, you should for your house just for everyday preparation. A gas shutoff tool, non-sparking. If you have gas at your house, not a bad idea to keep that stuff around. Not something that you would want to have to run around looking for during a disaster situation where you can't just run down to Lowe's and get this stuff. So those three things are something that most people probably haven't thought of to prepare for just everyday and disasters. Let me you know what you get. Let me know what you guys think, and if you guys have any other ideas about random items like that that you could use to prepare for disaster that people might not think of, go ahead and post them in the comments below. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. And links for all the stuff that I've mentioned on Amazon is below in the description as well. So check that out if you're interested. Talk to you later.